Welcome back guys. I was getting a little bit bored of just using the cruisers before and uh, I've been playtesting um, using short barrels instead of long. So I fancied uh, doing a new campaign with short range or short barrels on my main guns. They're not very good on secondary guns so there's not really much point in taking them on secondary guns. But um, yeah. I also wanted to do another challenge, which is make the most lavishly expensive ships that I can. Um, so I might combine the two challenges. We'll see what we come up with. So uh, with the short range barrels, you basically want the biggest caliber guns that you can get. So. Um, <clears throat> 13 is never a good option for a normal gun because of the accuracy difference but for a mortar a short range uh, mortar style gun where the uh, shots fly in the air and drop down onto the ship then the 13 inch is actually really really good so um, as you can see it's got 80 more AP damage and it's got um, 40 or 35 less muzzle velocity. So the muzzle velocity is what determines the arc of the shell. And obviously the damage is how much it'll do when it hits. So you're relying on um, big penetrating shots basically with this uh, tactic. So all we're going to be doing is building a battleship. We're not going to bother with anything else, it's going to be a battleship only run. Um, it might be battle cruiser, it depends which one turns out the best, so uh, what I'll do is probably design a few of these and then see which one comes out looking the best, because it's not always necessarily um, the biggest ship or um, the most expensive, sometimes it can be a smaller or cheaper ship. So, let's start off with the Dreadnought 3. We could even make a, a variety, you know, we don't need to just make one. We can make one of all of these if we wanted. But let's start off with this. So, first thing, select your engine, put the best engine on. And then look at the speed, set it to zero, and look at how much it costs and how much it weighs and put it up by one knot so it went up 280k so do it again 240 or something yeah same again similar 300k 500k 400k 900k so now we're getting to the point somewhere around here where it's starting to go up a lot more but the weight isn't increasing um, so we're not quite to the point where we've hit um, a jump yet a step so we'll go up to 24 so that was 500k and then 25, 700, 26, there we go. So we've uh, we've reached the limit, it's somewhere between 25 and 26. So try 25 .1. 0.2, 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, it's going to be here somewhere. I mean, these are going up quite a lot just for 0 0.1 knots. So we could just stick. Oh, I missed the jump, did I? What an idiot. Wasn't paying attention. There it is, it is 21. 
God, how useless am I? 25.1. So, you stay below the, the first cost step, really. That's the best thing to do for your speed. So we could put these on if we want, but I don't intend on getting very close to the enemy, so we probably don't even need them. We could have a little look just to see how much they weigh. They hardly weigh anything really, so we may as well stick them on. The anti torp one is always um, pretty much a given. Uh, any higher is not anywhere near as good. Uh, everything after 1 gives you 50% of what 1 gives you. So 1 is twice as good as all the others. So you can still put the others on if you want them, but 1 is like a bargain basically. Put that on to reduce the fire damage. Ah, uh, we've only got Citadel 2 unfortunately. Which isn't particularly great. So I might not bother with that. Let's see how much. So we're on 15,200. And then if we take these off. So it costs 600 tons. And what did it give us? 3.5 resistance, 5 armor. Eh, it might be worth it. Yeah. We'll take it. If we need to take it off, we can take it off. Okay, so that's all of the components done for now. Now, main tower. Each one of the hulls will have a different maximum tower spotting. So you would assume they would all use the same tower, but they don't. So the maximum on this is 3,900. So, uh, although you don't necessarily always want the maximum, if something else gives you a better long range or base accuracy, you might pr prefer to choose that instead. But spotting is pretty damn useful in this game. So we can uh, tower spotting isn't useful on the secondary tower though, unless you lose your first tower. So on this you would go for base accuracy. It also has damage control, smoke interference, and long range accuracy. So that one has got a uh, damage control, uh, sorry, smoke interference, and that one hasn't. So you might want this one instead for the extra smoke interference. That's also got smoke interference. It's actually better. So the rear tower too. Is better than the rear tower 4. <laughs> it's got to be a mistake. Okay, so we could take the rear tower 2 or the rear tower 6. So that's what the rear tower 6 looks like. And that's what the rear tower 2 looks like. So that might save a bit of weight if we... Uh, a bit of space, sorry. But this looks like it's got a funnel uh, placement and it doesn't look like our main tower has, so I think we're going to keep this one because it's got the funnel placement. Okay, so we've got 34%, which is obviously not very good. So if we do a bit of maths here, we need around about. 19 or 20 funnel capacity so each one of them weighs a different amount and gives a different amount of smoke interference you don't necessarily go up in um, equal amounts so sometimes it might be better to take three of these sometimes two of these and then sometimes there might be just one that's really good that will cover all three so 
that's uh, if we'd need two of them, which is 30 smoke interference, or three of these, which is 36. So on this particular hull, it's better to take two of these. So uh, let's have a look at the cost. So there's 10k weight difference, one smoke interference. So let's have a look at our smoke interference. We're already at 1.8. So it's better to reduce your smoke interference and have a low engine efficiency really in my in my opinion. So we're just gonna stick with the one tower. Right, I haven't decided where I want the towers quite yet. Because on these holes where they've got a cut in the hole, sometimes it's better to put a gun there, sometimes it's better to put your tower there. So, we'll have to have a look at our guns to find out. Always take coincidence, stereoscopic is just pathetic. I won't bother going into why. Okay, so we want 13 inch guns. I'm going to do this first. Now we want mainly AP with this. So I'm going to go increased AP. Uh, with the secondary guns, I'm just going to go for standard. And then I want the best AP on the shell. When you're using these uh, mortar guns, you want the best AP. You also want heavy shells. You also want increased shell ammo. Because the rate of fire is much higher, but the accuracy is lower. So you need the extra ammo. Okay, with these, you're looking at a minus shell velocity. This one's got the minus, so that's the one we want. With these, you're looking at shell penetration. So Dunite is the one we want. Now it does mean that we're going to be incredibly explosive. <laughs> 229, is that because I haven't put it? But yeah, it's because it, before you put a turret on, it has a ridiculous amount. So 87.9, that is one of the highest I've ever seen. <laughs> so let's put the best barbet on. Um, reloading, not necessary really with these short barrels, but we can always try it. Let's see what happens if we change this. We dropped it by 25, so it might actually be worth doing that while we're using Dunite. Once we get further than Dunite, we can increase this to heavy. So I think that's what I might do. So let's have a look at what this gun will do. Penetration wise. So it's got a 16 kilometer range. And it's penetration will be about 23 inches up to the deck. So 23 inches at 16 kilometers. But at 10 kilometers we're looking at 14 inches. Now, if they're using the best armor, um, they'll have 115. If we're doing 14 inches at 10 kilometers, then uh, to defend their main deck, they will need um, six or less main deck, or any deck, but main deck is the one they're gonna have the highest. So. If they're at 6, they'll have 13 deck armor with the highest armor quality. So I reckon that's plenty if we stay at 10 kilometer range. Right then. So we can either put these like this. have a look. Unfortunately this doesn't go over this. 
So that's probably not a good idea. So we're going to want to do that instead. Hopefully the barbette will go here. Unfortunately this game sometimes doesn't let you put barbettes where it should do, but luckily this hole seems like it allows it. And this gun is, uh, sorry, this barbette's not quite big enough to go over this gun. Let's try the next one. Okay, so that's the barbette we want. That's got good arc there, so we just want to increase the arc on this to match it. Okay, they look like uh, they're matching pretty well. I think that'll do. Right then, so this, bring this all the way back here. Stick a barbet. Oh, see what I mean? Doesn't make sense why you can't put the barbet there. So we're just going to lose out on space basically. Sometimes if you move your towers, it changes where you can put your barbet. It hasn't worked this time. So what we can do is put one of these in this gap here. So we'll have like a, a Q turret. That looks quite nice there. Okay. So we've got all of our centre line guns on. They're all looking good. We've all got good firing arcs. So we're going to be putting some armour on. But before I do that, I'm just going to see where. Right, so there's two inches can only go on there. So, all of your secondary guns, you're just going to do the normal full length, full um, diameter. I wonder if that'll fit there. So the reason we kept the speed low is to reduce the weight to be able to fit more armour on and more secondaries. You could put the speed up if you want, but then you just lose out on the secondaries and armour. So it's not really worth it in my opinion. Right then. So that's a little bit too much armour probably. That's not enough. So 14.7. That's a bit too much top armour, maybe not quite enough side armour. I always find that it's better to uh, armour up your normal ship than it is your Citadel. But I could be wrong. It's hard to really judge. But I think all this cit Citadel does is reduce the damage from a penetrating shot. Where if you armour up your armour, you don't even get penetrated in the first place. It does cost more though, your ordinary armour, than your Citadel armour. Right, I think I've got everything. Ah, beam and draft, I forgot to do that. It's going to make me change everything, isn't it? I bloody knew it. Right, let's have a look at the cost first. 24, so we've got 
um, five, sorry, 1760. Come on. Useless. So we actually have more weight, more draft we've got. So I'm not going to reduce the draft. Keep it as it is. I don't want particularly more draft, but I don't want to reduce it. Right, let's have a look at the beam. So we've got 2,300. Uh, that looks like 2,200, so it's made virtually no difference. 2,400, yeah, so no, no difference in the beam. So we could actually reduce the beam. Um, just to save the cash. So 3.8 million we'll save I think. But it does make your accuracy worse. So if we look at like five kilometers we've got three point nine. Four point four there, so I don't think it's worth um, losing the accuracy to be honest. So we'll leave both beam and draft in the middle for this ship. Right then. So we've done everything apart from the armor now. Unfortunately there's a huge four weight offset, but there's not much you can do about that unfortunately. Um we won't be able to fit anything else here so there is nothing that we can do other than take one of these turrets off which I'm not going to do so we'll just uh, put more aft um, deck and aft belt on so the one thing that I've learnt during my playtesting is how important the superstructure is I've always kind of neglected it a little bit because I didn't realise just quite how important it is. Um, so that's going to be the main difference in this campaign. And also the fore and aft belt. I always used to have them at half for what the main belt was. And then I found that I kept getting penetrated on them. So uh, yeah, we're going to go for that armour scheme with all four of them the same. Um, now, we might need to reduce it to 11 so we can put a bit more in the deck. But that might actually be a little bit too much of a reduction. Might only need 11.5. Because this is going to get... Oh no, this is quite expensive, the deck armor. That's what I've been going for. Um, four and a half deck two-thirds the amount of the main deck and then the main deck at about half of um, these four so it's not an exact science but that has seemed to be the best way forward for me so I just need to um, fix this offset Okay, that looks pretty damn good to me. Right then. I've got 20 side armour on, on the 8 inch guns. Did I do that by accident or did the game do that? I think the game did that. So I only need 11 side armor, so that's going to save quite a bit of weight. But I do need about 7 on the top. I have it basically uh, the same as what I have my main belt and main deck. 
so I could reduce that to six. So I have the um, main gun's side armor two inches higher, and then I have the secondary gun the same, and then I have the uh, the top at half of what the um, side is. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but that's pretty much spot on. So what we're going to do is increase these and then increase that. That was looking pretty good to me. Okay, just double check everything. Everything's looking fine. Yeah, everything's looking fine. So, we're going to save this design. And so the ship designer doesn't crash on us, we're going to exit the ship designer. Now I have had um, these delete themselves even after exiting the ship designer. So I'm just going to build one and I think that locks it in once you've built it. Okay, on to Dreadnought 2 now. I'm not a fan of this hull at all. Too much wasted space in the middle. You're forced into side turrets instead of center line, and it's it's an unnecessary expense. So I'm going to ignore that hull and this one. Okay, this one might be interesting. What have we got? 24,528. So it's got much higher resistance, worse hull form and stability, and floatability, but it's got much higher resistance. Let's just build it and see what happens. So we're going to do the same thing with the speed. So we're going to go up bit by bit. So there was a bit of a jump there. There was a gigantic jump there. So uh, let's try 23.1. Okay, 23.5. So it's somewhere between them two. So try 23.3. 1. So that's how fast this hull can go, 23.1. So once you've done the speed, you can now do the beam and draft, and they show you the correct amount of uh, whether you're saving or losing weight by increasing and decreasing these. So we're just going to check that out before we start t uh, tinkering with anything else. So it looks like we're going to just stay in the middle again. I think it's the speed um, of this era 
it's best to keep these in the middle with the speed on this here. Okay, let's see what the spotting is on this one, 3,900, I think that's the same. But it looks like we've got the same towers on, on this one. It might only be, oh no, no, I was going to say it might only be custom battle that you have different towers, but... I have seen in the last campaign that two of my light cruisers have different towers. Right then, uh, funnel. Can you put it's backwards? <laughs> so there we go. Switch it the correct way around. Um, so we got 38% there. So it looks like this is going to have the same deal. This is going to be the best tower for the job. It was a bit strange having a large tower there, but a larger, sorry I should say. So he's not going to be able to fire over him, but might just move it a little bit. There we go. But we might be able to put a barbette here. Interesting, this ship doesn't have barbettes. Well, that's got to be a, a mistake. This is a new hull that the devs have brought out, so it's got to be a mistake that it can't have barbettes, surely. So, uh, let's bring this back as far as we can without affecting the fire arc. That'll do. Ah, so we're going to end up with a weird ass Q turret, we might, might end up with two. <laughs> right, this is going to be one messed up ship. So because we can't have barbettes, we've just got to sh shove these uh, guns in wherever we can, basically. Right, so we've reached the limit. Now technically, what we could do 
if we really wanted, was see if we can fit side turrets here. So stick this all at the front. And then see if we can fit side turrets here. Doesn't look like this particular turret will fit. Ah, there we go. So it might be the main tower getting in the way. Which is a problem. I mean, we could still do it. We've still got a, a pretty decent arc, but we could, seeing as I wanted to be lavish, increase the cost by 3 million. That's not nowhere near as much as I was expecting it to be. And uh, see if we can stick 13 so now. We can. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I like that. So it's a weird ship. But it'll do it'll do the trick. So we move this one more. Doesn't really affect the firing arc, and then we can move that, which will help the firing arc of this turret a little bit. Not massively, but could even try one more. Let's have a look. That's affected it quite a bit, so I'm not going to bother with that. Right then. Looking good. I mean, it's looking ridiculous, but if it's a side shot that we're doing, one, two, three, four, five, six, six um, turrets are going to fire on a broadside, so it's pretty, pretty good, pretty crazy. I might even run standard quarters just to reduce a bit of weight. Not standard, cramped. Okay. We're going to want some point defense. And then the rest can just go into armour. So let's do the superstructure first, seeing as that's the heaviest. Nice, we've still got quite a lot. Fore and aft belt next. Um, let's do 644. Looking good. So let's increase the turret armour a bit. the wrong way round. Looking good. Right, so I've got 4%. I can either reduce the displacement slightly to reduce the cost, or I can put a bit more armour on. So let's see how much we actually save quite a bit doing this. So I'm just going to go until the ship changes size, which is there. And then I'll just put the rest on to uh, 
bit of armor. So. Oh, uh, I completely forgot weight offset. Right, so with the weight offset being as it is, um, I'm going to be better off moving this to here, putting this here. So there's not as much of a weight offset now. This gun's got worse firing arc now, but this one's got better, so, so that's actually just as good. Okay, so we're going to need a bit more on the aft now. Quite a bit more, but nowhere near as much as um, we would have needed on before. Okay, so that's pretty much spot on now. Put a little bit more in the deck, maybe. A little bit more in the belt and the superstructure. Oh, that's a bit too much, actually. How much is the superstructure? Yeah, that'll do. Perfect. Alright, I'll just quickly double check. Barbettes, right. Flash fire. Wow! How much did that actually change? 16%. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as it is. Risk the 16%. Right, so these are basically the same. So I'm not going to bother building one of these because it's just a smaller version of that. Um, I, I want to have a look at the towers though, just to see. So that's 3-1. That's 3-9. That's 3-9. While I was uh, playtesting in custom battle, I found one that was twice as high on a worse hull. So like here, you've got 5,300 on these. I know it's a different class of ship, but on the other one in the custom battle, it wasn't even a different class of ship. So there, 4,700 uh, on this, the other one was 5,300. So this one's going to have the better spotting so I think this is the ship that I'm going to use okay so do the engine first and then do these so we'll start at 24 There was a bit of a jump there. See how much the jump was in weight. 270. 80. So yeah. It's somewhere around here the first jump. So it's just there. So I'm going to stay below all of the jumps. So 26 on this. You have a look at the beam. That gave us more this time. So I might run a lower beam. So what's that? 10,100.
10,900. So it's actually better to leave the draft as it is. It will affect the um, accuracy though. So it might be better to reduce it just for the accuracy. I might leave the crew at cramped again. Oh, did I change that on the other? I can't remember. So as you can see here, this is where I would want a barbet to, to fire over this, but it just doesn't let you unfortunately. I don't know why they put restrictions on where you can put barbets, it's very annoying. Every now and then you'll find that one of the barbets does actually go there, which is even more weird. So because we can't fit two of these down here um, I'm gonna have this turret here so it's not ideal it's gonna mess with our weight offset having the engines this far forward I can't actually remember which bar bet I mean, so let's try that one. Yep, lovely, spot on. Right then, I think that is as good as we're going to be able to make this in terms of uh, big guns so I'm probably going to end up with too much weight on this so I'll have to strip some displacement off I reckon As you can see, these weigh 9.3 compared to the 2.1 of these, which is a bit annoying. Let's take the uh, weight off. 8.5. I'm going to take them because it's worth the weight probably to have an extra gun in the space but it is a bit annoying
Alright, that was looking good to me. So now we can, I mean, we can put a little bit of top armor on these, but don't think it's that important, seeing as they haven't even got any side armor. Reloading. I haven't done any of this on this one. Glad I checked. So 60% flash fire. Reduce that to 44. As you can see, when, like I said before, having the funnel this far forward really screws up with your full weight offset. I mean, what we could do, move this turret to the front and shift all that back. It's actually not bad choice to be honest because this this full weight offset is uh, is a bit extreme That makes more sense. I mean, I could stick one more of these here. It's not entirely necessary, but... Can't do any harm. Got a little bit of spare weight now. Right then, I think that is good enough.
Yeah, that's as good as we're going to make it. I don't know why the four weight offsets just gone to that. That's weird. Oops. Wait. What's just changed there? Have I just deleted something? That was weird. Right, spot on. I didn't change the barrel length here. There's always something that you forget. Uh, now they're not going to fit, so I'm going to have to move them about. It's worth doing though. Right, I think we're finally good to go. Took a while, but we got there. Now let's hope the ship designer doesn't crash. Happy days. So they are the three ships that we're going to be rocking around with. So let's check them all out, shall we? See which ones have got the best accuracy. So at 10 kilometers we got 0 0.7 and at 1 kilometer we got 52. So 52 and 0 0.7. So 58 and 0 0.8, so this has actually got a little bit better accuracy. Nine and zero point eight, so this has got a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more accuracy. So the biggest ship is actually the least accurate of the three, which is interesting. And it's the most expensive by seven million. That's five million more, right? That's obviously quite a bit slower, so there's, there is quite a bit of a difference between the three ships. I think the armor scheme on all three was practically identical. So I'm going to build equal amounts of all three. So... 41, 75, 76.2, so that's 77, at 
107 practically 106 so we can build three of each and then we've got 51 million left over so three of each and then one more of the main battle line Just double check. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a, an entertaining start. <laughs> so the choice is roll around in a huge task fleet with all my ships. I mean, I've only got thirteen. Or split them up into like groups of three or four. So I could go three, 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 four, or all thirteen. So uh, obviously it depends if they've got doom stacks, which they nearly always have. So I'll probably roll around with all thirteen until all the doom stacks are dealt with. Yeah, well, we'll call it an end to this episode, guys. So thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon.